So um, I was planning to start this off with a simple um, breakdown of like directions um, and timings. Uh, but before I like just list it all out for you, I'll just start with demoing it. Um, this first one is uh, same time, same direction. And you see like the poi are basically mirroring each other. And you can move this all around. Um, and one fun thing to start off with that's pretty simple is a three pedal flower with this in um, wall plane, which is the way that I'm spinning right now versus if I were to do this now in wheel plane, but we'll just work with wall plane. And so a pedal, uh, if you guys aren't familiar with, is when a poi hits a spot and it's like it's drawing a line. So there's a pedal down here and it's gonna fly up here and there'll be a, another pedal there and then it's gonna travel over here and that creates another pedal. And that is a three pedal flower. So it's gonna boom, 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 boom. And there's your three pedal flower. And to do that with same time, same direction, is just swing your arms up and over and back down again. And you can really um, exaggerate that by letting the poi like kind of bounce almost in the spot. Like when I go to my left for that second pedal, I like to give it a good like punch out to the side so I can really feel where that pedal is happening. And then uh, penduluming across to make that third one and then back down. And that completes it. And it looks really nice with LEDs and fire because uh, you it kind of creates a trail so you can really see that pedal happening. Oops, there we go. So that's just a really nice simple uh, beginning uh, to a flow. Like if you just if you just started, this music's kind of slow. You're like burning off some extra fuel. You can just start moving this around. It's really easy to get into it and warm up. Um, and uh, from here, let's see. Sorry, I can't like read the chat from where I am. So okay, yeah. Feel free to type any questions in. Um, I'll try to. Um, back if you want to like give me a call. If I can't see that, I'll be able to answer that. Um, so does everyone have their, like, uh, can everyone do that? Let me just get like a, a heads up in the chat. Are we good with three pedal flower? Um, some people have it. Some people don't I understand. It took me a little bit actually, cause same timing is kind of like it's, it takes a bit to get it just right and mirrored. Um, but just like play around with it. Um, one part that could be tricky is like getting them closer together. Um, and you might like hitting like your elbow at times. Um, so like, I like to like, kind of think like I'm creating space here. Like while one is going, I'm like creating space for the other head to uh, travel through my, excuse me. If you can see that, I'll try from the side here. It's like going in the space created by my arm. Do from the other side. Pretty good here, cool, need practice, right on, yeah. Yeah, we can all use a little bit of practice. Um, so, okay, so going from three petal flower, if we can do this, um, let's try butterflies. Anyone, uh, are we good on, butter do people know their butterflies or do we need some butterfly breakdowns? Here's a little side demo. Um, if you do need some help with it, uh, know that they're like, the planes for butterflies are, are like um, split. See like I'm almost making an X with my poi from the side, but from the front, it doesn't look like that. It looks like they're just going together. Love butterflies, yeah, me too. Um, can we do split time butterflies? 
That gets a little more tricky. But those are really fun. Um, one thing you can do with uh, butterflies is you can start to do um, body tracers. And that would, uh, if, you're, if you're in your butterfly pattern and you want to move, you can like take one of them and uh, sneak it under the other and go back and forth from front to behind you. And that's like a nice start to a body tracer. And the more you experiment with that, the more you can like really start to like jam out and move around with it. Hey, Curran. Yeah. Um, we have a request to demo. This okay. Yeah. Let's see the split time. Okay. So um, this is this is same time, uh, opposite direction, um, and then we have oops, the uh, yeah they can smack together. They have split time, um, and to do that. Um, I like to go into like a thread the needle, which is if you're comfortable with one direction, like with um, your butterflies. So I have like my blue poi is in front, and that's it's in front at the bottom of the swing, so down there. But at the top, it's going to be behind the yellow poi, and that's how. So you you will do that so they don't get tangled together. So. To speed things up into a split time, I like to travel through switching um, the, the front head. So I am not just doing the, the blue in front, I'm doing the yellow in front. And so I'm kind of like moving one after the other as they go through the rhythm, like each beat is changing. So if we can get thread the needle, then we can like speed it up. And the, the, the speeding up, you can, oops, you can create a quicker motion and change when they cross. Um, for the same time, uh, uh, or same time, opposite direction, they are crossing at the bottom and the top, but with split time, they're crossing on the sides. So like they're gonna be crossing over here and over here. We can see that. Okay, and break down body tracers. So once um, we can do body tracers with like multiple patterns, um, there's the split time one, which is is, is actually a bit harder. Um, and this is me demoing it right now. Um, but you can do it with a split time same direction, which is a little bit easier. You can do it with same time same direction as well. Um, and so basically, what you're doing is. You're taking um, one one of the one of your hands, and it is going to like run along your body. And there's so many ways you can do this. Um, you're basically traveling around the frame of your body with your hand. Uh, so one way to do that, um, we can try same time, same direction, and my yellow poi is going to go under. my armpit. And you can go under your armpit and over your armpit. And you can pretty much play around with this however you like, um, switching it. And all the while, uh, keeping that uh, same time pattern, because when you're, when you're moving your hand around in same time, you're gonna, it's going to feel like it's going to change. Like you, might, you might end up in uh, split time. Um, but if you can, you can fine tune that and with practice you can maintain a same time pattern. Um, but it, it, does, it does take some practice to maintain it. But so if you fall out of it, you can always come back to this three petal flower that we learned in the beginning. 
and then go from three petal flower to a simple body tracer under the armpit, over the shoulder, and back to three petal flower. How are we doing with that? Cool. Cool, cool, cool. Um, yeah, and so you can do that with uh, same time, opposite direction too. You can go under the armpit on both sides. You can go over the shoulder and just play around with it. There's so many ways you can do it. Um, and once you get nice with like moving the poi around your body in that fashion, it, it starts to open up uh, ways in which you can flow and you can really start to feel more free with your movements because um, in doing so, you're, you're really training and getting familiar with this rope uh, moving itself around you and like in the, a lot of times you're going to like hit yourself in the legs and like you'll just like uh, learn to feel where not to move the poi and where you can move the poi and where those pathways are. Um, any other, anyone need any further breakdown with that? All right, I think we're good. Okay, so moving on. Um, I mentioned at one point a uh, pendulum in the three petal flower, boom, boom, pendulum. That's this motion right here. Um, when after I do the second, pull, uh, second petal, it swings over to my side, my native side, I call it. Um, and that, that swinging motion is a pendulum motion. Um, and these are really great moves because they're they're um, they're like kind of they slow it down and you can use it in a lot of fashions. Like you can really like change you can change your direction. You can just create like different kinds of pattern transitions with uh, use of pendulum. So getting them down is very it's very nice, especially if you're a beginner because it's it is a very simple thing. Um, and so one thing we can do to start is this, this simple pendulum motion right here, where one poi is pendulum back and forth, and it's, it is going to be on the inside. So like I was talking about making space before, and that, that same time, same direction, where one is making space in this part of my arm to flow freely through, um, that is the inside. So we're going to have that poi penduluming on the inside, while the other poi is doing a beat. So we're just doing one beat, two beat, yeah, there. We're just doing some beats. And um, try just penduling back and forth while doing the beat. Like, just get used to doing two different motions. And then once you can like do that, try to like move them together. And what you're going for is your hand with the beat pull with the with the, the poi that's doing the beat is going to follow along with the pendulum motion of the other head. So it's gonna look like this. And I'm I'm creating a connection here. Uh, it's like an invisible line of attachment to this penduluming head. Another fun thing is you can just like you could just swing it back and forth and create like a clockwork kind of motion. And um, this is a really fun way to also like just get warmed up and ready for some more complicated stuff down the line. How are we doing with that word? All right, so taking that a step further is um, a, called a triquetra, which is this. Um, so basically what's happening is um, we're just adding a little bit on to that. Um, the poi that's doing the beat is actually doing that same three petal flower that we learned in the beginning. It's just boom, boom, pendulum, boom. Three petal flower, you could do it in other directions. This is, this is the one I had started with going to my left. Um, which I'm a little bit more comfortable with, but I'll switch up for sake of demo. Um, so three petal flower, and this point, the pendulum one, is when it's at its um, 
When it's on my non-native side, which um, I don't know if you guys are familiar with that, let me, let me give a quick explanation. Um, the poi that is, when, when you're spinning on the side that your arm is on, this is native. When it moves over here, this is now, this arm is now non-native um, because it's now on the other side that it's not connected to. Um, so when it gets to the non-native side, it's gonna come up. So I'm making like almost like a big, it's like almost more of an oval. Um, but to really clean this up, it's uh, curve, curve on the bottom and then straight across. But that doesn't have to be perfect. You can just, you can clean that up if you want. Um, and again, the, the beat poi is going to create that connection to the head and follow it. And really what's happening is it's, it's, it's creating that, that three petal flower. So at the bottom here, there's gonna be a beat. And then at the, when the pendulum poi is non-native, there's another beat there, uh, or another petal there. And then on the pendulum movement at the top, another beat out here and back down. And that is your triquetra. How are we doing with that? Any questions? Any further explanations? So um, taking that further, um, I'll just give this, I don't, I don't expect anyone to get this because it, it took me a little bit, but I'll just, I'll just show it to, um, for sake of knowing which way you can take this, um, is doing an extension and it's called the Mercedes where you kind of, you kind of make this whole thing bigger. And um, so let me get into it, let me feel it up. There we go. So this is the Mercedes. And, um, and if you think of the Mercedes symbol, like Mercedes Benz, uh, it's got a circle and I'm doing that with an extension. So instead of a pendulum motion, I'm doing an extension, which is like just really letting my arm relax and swing out wide. Um, I'm not doing beats, like this would be me doing beats. It's an extension, which would be no beats involved. Um, making a big circle and then the, uh, the beat poi is just making, again, that three petal flower pattern. Um, now I believe my Mercedes, it has the um, point at the top and two points at the bottom. So you just adjust that three petal flower and put those beats in the right spot, which takes a, a good bit of practice. So I'm, I don't expect anyone to really know that right now, but that's just uh, me showing you like, where you can take this. Um, is this extension coming from the inner or outer? Is it in the inner or outer? Um, oh yeah, good question. Um, at this point, it, I move mine to the outer, and I'm no longer, um, I'm not, I, the connection, like where I had my hand to the head, uh, it's actually now more hand uh, to my other hand connection. So they're kind of staying closer together for this. Does that clear things up? Hopefully, we good. Um, okay, so yeah, so taking pendulums um, and working with them, um, you use them for directional changes. Um, so depending on which part I'm at with my pendulum, I can change my timing and direction with that. Uh, so if I am on my native side of the pendulum, I can switch into a same time, same direction. Because at this, this moment here, I can transfer that poi into a beat, into a beat pattern. It can go from pendulum into a beat. Um, and if I'm on my, my non-native side, then I can go into a, um, a, a opposite direction pattern. Um, if I were to just continue, instead of like going back and forth into another pendulum motion, if I were to keep that going, if I were to turn it into a beat from pendulum Pendulum beat. 
and then I'm in B. And then if I'm if I'm messing with my um, my uh, my try catcher a beat poi hand, then that's where they turn into um, the uh, opposite direction. Uh, now it, it all will depend on the way you experiment with this and the direction you're going. So um, I'll talk a little bit about uh, anti-spin versus in-spin. Um, I'm not sure if everyone's familiar with this, but I mean, hey, it's beginner, so I figure it's good to really get this down. Um, taking notes helps, because um, there can be a lot of info um, to really get it. Okay, so um, in spin is, if we don't know, um, this is in spin. This is anti spin. Um, in spin, I am spinning the poi in a beat formation um, and moving my hand in the direction in a circle that the poi is also spinning. So it is, it's spinning this way. My hand is also going to be moving that way. That is in spin. In, like, you think about it, in the same spinning direction. Um, or so then there's anti-spin, uh, which is where a lot of the, the pedals come from. Like if you're making uh, a circle, do in-spin. If you're make if you want to make a specific pedal or like a point, you do anti-spin. Um, and anti-spin is where you know it's the opposite. It's like I'm spinning in that direction, but my hand is moving in that direction. And so that creates more uh, points, the like moving the head moving through space is tracing out a different kind of line. Where so we have an in spin. Think about I'm I'm drawing a circle here, I'm drawing a circle here, I'm drawing a circle here and down here, and that's four circles right there. Um, if you were to envision that on a grid in front of you, where I if I were to do anti spin, it would make it moves in a way where it creates like points and jumps between those points. Um, and if you were to trace it, it would look like a little oval is happening. Um, and those would be like the petals, like a like um, kind of like I guess like a clover. Um, and you can uh, exaggerate that in various ways. Like you could you could make a circle if you're moving an anti-spin, but it's if you move quicker, it'll make a pedal. Um, so how are we doing? I hope that clears that up for everyone, because um, that um, comes into play a lot. Like I'm doing, I'm doing my my three pedals in anti-spin. Um, if I were to go in in-spin, it would look like this versus anti-spin. Um, so yeah, so that pendulum thing. That is, I'm also moving, for the tri, tri catcher, I'm moving in an anti-spin pattern there. Um, and so yeah, there's, you can mix and mash this like all you want. It's like once you start to f get familiar with it, try switching up, try doing the uh, thing in an in-spin formation. And you'll find that like your, your pendulum motion is definitely going to change a lot. Um, and you can you can like reverse that like go back to in spin and anti spin and like play around back and forth all you want you know it's like your flow like get as like like remix it whatever you want to do like mess it up and just experiment um, that's how a lot of the stuff gets created anyways um, okay so let's do a little bit of talk about stalls and more directional changes. Um, because those are really good when you want to create your flow. Um, so let's go. Let's start spinning in and uh, same time, opposite direction. Um, uh, real quick, there's like two ways you can do this. You can see like in the center, um, my heads are going upwards. Um, they can also be going downwards, and that will also affect how uh, you do your body tracers. Um, 
and your butterflies. So just keep that in mind, uh, which direction you're going. If you were to do it this way and then change your orientation, that that is also going to change uh, which direction the center heads are going up or down. Um, so getting used to stalls. Um, the easiest ones, so you have, you have vertical stalls, which is like I'm stalling down here, and then there's like upward, I'm stalling up. Uh, those are the easiest to start with, and you have vertical stalls, which are require a little bit more messing around with to get the feel of, because it's like you gotta like chase your uh, tether a little bit to create that that like punch. Um, but it definitely it helps to really get those down for various reasons. You can create crisper uh, petals when you do that. Um, so. Not focusing on horizontal, let's focus on the vertical. Uh, like a simple downward stall. It's really like try like guiding your poi downward, um, like cradling it almost, um, and like just bringing it to like a slow stop. Like you could like um, you could really do it however fast, but let's just um, try and do it like slowly back and forth. We can get our downward stalls and um, try to minimize the amount of like swing at the bottom. Like that's when you're getting it really clean is when you can stop it in a very specific point without it moving around anymore. That's when you know you got it good. Um, and do the same with an upward motion. You're kind of like moving your hand in the very fashion that the head is moving, you're kind of like you're kind of like chasing it a little bit. So like there's this like constant even tension on the head, but not too much. So it's like loose. You just want to have like this. You almost it's like you're making the rope solid um, and are able to like pull on it. So just go up like like you were doing with the downward stall, where you're guiding it into a relaxed position. You're gonna do that upwards too. So just going to guide it upwards into a specific spot without too many uh, variations. Like I'm not like going like, like, I mean you could if you want, if that's your pattern. Like, But getting it nice and consistent. Um, and so adding them together, like two, two poys uh, to practice that. Um, Try to, on the upward swing, uh, if you're going, like we're going, we're going um, opposite direction, same time, poise in the center are moving upwards. And we're just gonna try to bring them together in a stall at a very even and controlled rate. And like as close to the, the same position as we can. And that will really help us to um, get the feel of our of our vertical stalls. And then the same thing is downward stalls. Try to get them to like land in like a controlled area, and um, and then we can get a little more tricky with that. How's everyone doing? We got our stalls. Who? All right, um, so let's try um, some split time. Uh, here is, we got split time weaves. Can we do split time weaves? I'm just doing a, um, a two beat or a three beat pattern right now. Or to be, if, whichever one works. Um, but I want to bring it to wall plane. So we're spinning in a split time in wall plane. And I'm again uh, creating that space for one of the heads to travel um, around my arm in here. Um, just like that, I got my blue boy on the inside, I got my yellow boy on the outside. Um, real quick, this is like where you can. 
start to get into isolations. But uh, that this just takes a lot of drilling with like a mirror to help you see where you're at. So that's like just something to work on isolations. Um, and uh, I can break that down if you want, but I'm going to go into more stall talk for right now. Um, so split time, wall plane is what I'm doing right now. And we're gonna take that and we're gonna do stalls. One is gonna go down and one's gonna go up. So I'm taking my inside arm, my blue poi, and that's gonna go down out to the side. And my yellow poi, which is on the outside, is gonna, is gonna swoop down and up like that. And so I'm creating like these, I'm creating like these lines. It's like my arm is a line, right angle to the poi over here, and another right angle to the poi up there. And that's a really nice shape. It's really like good, and like if you're in the middle of the flow and there's like an emphasis in the music, then you're like, boom, and there we go. And then you can take that and you can switch directions and you can go back and forth like that. It's really fun. Or you can do um, a stall chaser, which is another nice, fun little movement. Not too hard either. Um, if we can, you don't even need to get this. This takes a little bit getting that just right. But um, let's just start from we got our poi resting um, after its downward stall. It's just going to hang there. Um, nice position to find yourself in. Um, you're doing like a bunch of crazy flows and then you do a downward stall. It's like a good way to transition and create some like pause, like a little bit of rest. Just like pause that poi, let it hang. Um, so you got your poi, it's hanging there. And you take your other poi and you're gonna swing it down, swing it across to non-native, join up with that other poi, and you're gonna do what's called a stall chaser. So this poi is gonna go over my arm, or over, over me, it's gonna go over my head, um, coming across my body, and I'm going to kind of create like a, right here as it meets up with my hand, I'm gonna let it, I'm not gonna do a whole extension, it's not gonna be complete, I'm gonna let it like kind of make an angle to my arm. Like, it's gonna be like that, and it's gonna go across like this. So I'm kind of having it go across with this angle to my arm, and this one, the one that's, on, that's been resting here, is gonna just link up with that. And uh, I'm creating that uh, connection between the two hands, um, that they're they're just joined together and the the blue hand is is in line with the yellow hand and they're creating a nice like crisp line across my body how are we doing with that is it essential oh wait, that's from before uh, are we good Okay, I'm gonna assume we're, we're, we're having fun. <laughs> um, yeah, so we got our stall chaser. Um, and these are really fun, you can do them back and forth. Play around with it. It's a real smooth, slower, graceful motion. And you can just, you can just go back and forth. When you go to one side, let one pull your rest, let the other one swing out and come back. And you just mess around with that. And then you can always like, from any of these points, like go back to a same time, same direction pattern, or mix it up and go a little faster. Uh, whichever you feel like. Um, okay, uh, what's next? All right, so yeah, so another, um, another directional change is uh, some tossing. Um, I don't know how, uh, how jelly we wanna get, because tossing can be a little tricky, but um, I'll, I'll break some down for you, uh, real, just a couple. Um, this is an in-spin toss. Um, and what I'm doing is, um, is my thing still sharing? My screen working? Okay, yeah, I'm at word, okay, never mind. All right, so in-spin toss. Um, I'm just letting it swing down and up. And right when I get to like a horizontal, Point. I'm just giving um, a very wait. I'm just giving a very light flick down. Um, not a lot. I don't have to.
Now, I don't really have to give much force. It does depend on how much weight you have in your knobs, but not not too much. Like you should be able to like figure out what you're doing, unless you have those like um, loops. If you have loops, get knobs. Just saying, knobs are way better, um, and they're more fun. Um, just a little foot down creates and or yeah, a little foot down and. What you're trying to go at is uh, the poi head is almost going to like float there and hover, and the the tether is going to swing around, and almost once you get it clean, it's going to be almost in the same spot where your hand is. Uh, this is going to take a little bit to dial in, but it's not too much, and it's really fun, and um, it will uh, it's it works as a directional change. Um, so I'm spinning. Um, let me get the way I was going. I'm spinning in uh, split time, uh, same direction, and one point is going to swing down and come to the, uh, like if I were to go in an in-spin motion, I'm going to go this way towards my left side, and the point is just going to swing up like that, and then it's going to be going uh, like when I catch it, it's gonna to want to go in the other direction that it was going, like, like this. Now, now I'm now I'm doing opposite direction. I because I was split time, I ended up in a split time opposite direction motion. Um, but it it will, it will depend. Um, yeah, we can do it in same time. And now you're doing opposite direction. Um, now that, that, so that is an in-spin toss. Um, there is an anti-spin toss, which is a little bit more difficult, but I mean, hey, if you're feeling daring, try it. Uh, where you get to that horizontal position, instead of flicking down, you're going to flip up. And so it's going to be like that. Um, that one you have to give a little bit more energy, um, just because you're going against like gravity with that. Um, and you're, if you like, don't give it enough. It's you're not gonna your tether isn't gonna make it all the way around and back to your hand. Um, but that is that is fun because you can do a toss with that and keep spinning. Um, or excuse me. Um, let me get back to it. You can keep there. We go. You can keep spinning in the uh, same direction. It like it, it's it's less likely to switch your uh, directional spinning. Um, how are we doing? Can we do tosses? All right, cool. Yeah, we see some tosses happening. Right on. All right. Um, okay. Let me one sec. Let me look at my notes. Let me see what I haven't covered yet. Okay, cool. We got pendulums, motion changes, Okay. All right. So, um, how's everyone doing right now? Is there anything that I need to uh, get back into, explain a little bit more? Um, if not, I'm going to move ahead to uh, some other poi uh, styles of spinning um, that. Uh, some of them may be a little bit more complicated, um, but uh, it'll be fun to try them and give you an idea of what you might like to work on. Um, so, oh, one more toss that I actually was going to cover uh, first before I go into that is the no beat toss. Um, and there's two ways to do it. You can do it like this, where the point is is on its upward swing. I am like as it's coming up, I'm going to move it in like this direction. Um, like it gets past the horizontal point. It's and it's like a little bit like a 45 degree. I'm going to like kind of like try to drag it across. Like I start to pull on the tether. And um, as I'm doing that, I'm going to let go. Um, so I'm kind of like creating this, this where like I'm 
with this toss, with the in-spin and anti-spin toss, I'm creating a beat right there, like the, with the tether. Like the tether is, is spinning like this. But with a, a no beat toss, you're not creating that beat. Oops, excuse me. It's just floating through it, the air like that. And I'm just like letting go and meeting right back up with it. Um, these are really fun to get because you can get, um, you can like toss around your hand, um, like that space that you create. Um, you can like move like this, like around your arm. Um, so it, it opens up a lot of possibilities for your flow where you feel like you're getting, uh, you're like hitting yourself and you want to move in this direction, well throw that no beat toss in there and now you can, you can travel that pathway uninterrupted. Um, so the, yeah, so there's that way where it's like you're doing like a pendulum and then coming across, and then there's like this. I it's like a you're making a, a chicken wing. It's like if you're going in the other direction, um, your wrist is going to come down like this, and it's going to kind of like you're kind of going to make the, the the chicken wing elbow almost not, but not not too much, um, and it's going to like. You're going to do the same thing, oops, but it's going to be coming from like behind your shoulder. You're letting go and you're doing like the same kind of like dragging across, like right here when it's, when I'm like here, I'm like kind of like moving, there, there we go, I'm like moving it this way. And it's like creating, it's almost like doing an extension with your tossing. Like you're extending the tether in that fashion. Um, oh, that actually reminded me when you're doing your chicken wing. Um, there's another opportunity here to do um, kind of like a body stall or like a break. You could call it, I guess, is somewhere um, where I I'm spinning and I go to my my the back of my arm and I can like do another directional change there. And you can do it on the inside too like this or like that and these are fun to play with um you can because they're really they're actually really easy to do uh once you like figure out like where you can um move your arm and get in the way of it and so i'm like doing it with like a little bit of like spring to it like i'm like catching it on my elbow and just letting it bounce off and switch the directions um and you'll see this uh, type of directional change a lot with like glow stickers and like raves because they like to like bounce off of each other and like you can you can like get your legs involved um, however you want to do that. Uh, that's a, that's a really fun one. Um, yeah, you can do like this kind of stuff. Oops, that uh, yeah, what is it? you name it, mess around. Um, some people like will like do it like behind. Um, yeah, however you can create that effect. The bouncing off, yeah. Um, I've been messing with quarter time, um, which is like you have like split time, which is like a, um, a little bit faster than same time. So it's like same time is like slow, split time is a little bit faster, and then you have quarter time, which is like uh, you're moving like a quarter of a circle before something else happens. So things are happening a lot faster. Um, and I've been messing around with like quarter time of these stalls, or these breaks. So you can like, the fun part of like quarter time is um, like when there's like a breakdown in like a song and like music's like speeding up or like, there's a nice drum roll, that's when you can like kind of match up and sync with the music to this quarter time patterns. Um, translates really well when you're performing, um, or just like feels really fun when you're flowing. Um, and it just takes a little, takes a little bit of drilling to like sync it up right, but once you got it, it's really nice. It's really nice. Um, okay, so we got tosses. Um, let's try, let me talk about a little bit of contact work. I'll just do a little intro, because contact is pretty, gets a little bit more difficult. Um, so I'm just going to give like a little little intro to it so you guys can can see what it's like. Um, but a good place to start is like from right where we were with the tossing. Um, but instead of catching the knob, 
you're going to catch the head. Um, so try to try to do that. Try to toss and grab the head. And uh, you can play around with this, like holding the head. And instead of like spinning from the knob, you're spinning with the head. This is fun because it gets. It's like a little bit different. It's like changes every flow. You can pretty much do the same thing. It's just like the weight is like opposite. Um, I recommend trying it, getting familiar with it, because um, you'll learn more about your set of poi when you do this, because like, you'll just get more familiar with all the parts of it and what you can do. So catch the head, like mess around with catching the head, um, and you got it grabbed and you're spinning your tether um, toward you, you can go into the first bit of a contact roll. Um, which is when the tether is coming up, it's coming up, you're going to then send the poi head down your forearm. And you're gonna, it's gonna try and, you're gonna try and make it look like that. Um, the poi ideally is going to be on the inside of your elbow. Um, you, if you end up out here, that's another move. Um, that I might cover in a second if we feel like we want to go further down this rabbit hole. Um, so poi is the, so the tether is going on the outside. The poi is rolling onto the inside. And so that takes just like get that roll, like takes a little bit of practice. Um, uh, but you want it to, you want the head to land right at your elbow crease, maybe a little bit above. Mainly what you, would, like, really is important, though, is you have some slack at the top here with your knob. And um, different sets, different lengths is going to be different. You, you might have different lengths to work with. You might have a little bit more. But whatever it is, you want to have a little bit of weight to play with because you're going to, like, you're going to take that weight and you're going to throw it out after you have received the poi in your elbow crease, and that's going to return it to your hand. So I'm spinning the tether towards me. It's on the outside, and uh, it, I'm going to let it go, and the poi head is going to roll down my forearm, and I'm going to grab the tether as it comes to this point, and it's going to kind of wrap around your hand or your arm a little bit. Um, we can see that. This is kind of how it's it's ended up. It's like wrapped around my hand. Set. Hope that translates well on Zoom. And I've got it. I've got a little bit of slack here, a little bit of poi tether to play with. Um, and I'm just going to toss it out. And so yeah, so you can you can do this in stages, like I've I've shown. Toss and catch the head. That's stage one. You can hang out here, spin your tether around a little bit, and then when you're feeling ready, let it go and let the head roll down your forearm and grab the tether as it comes up again. How are we doing? Ah, oh, cool. Right on. Nice job, Kieran. Um, all right, hopefully that works well. Um, so then the other fashion is if you go to the outside um, of your elbow versus coming on to the the inside we're here if it goes if you end up on the outside uh, you gotta be you gotta be quick to catch this but it's gonna travel off your body and the tether is going to end up down here you're going to end up like this and so you gotta like you're gonna swing down and try to grab it on its way out. Now that one might be a little little bit tricky. Both of these are a little bit tricky. You can also like like if I miss it, if I don't catch that tether, oops, I can grab it with my elbow crease. Like in, in various ways. Like I went to the inside and I I missed it. I just grabbed it with my elbow crease. And you can actually spin from your elbow. I haven't messed with this too much. I've been meaning to, but you can you can you, you can do whatever the heck you want with it. But yeah, you can go and spin by holding the knob with your elbow crease. Um, 
And that's that if you want. That's a, that's a cool way to do it. Um, where's my um, Okay, so we got like eight minutes left. Um, what do we want to? What do we want to talk about? Um, I can cover any of the stuff that we just did. Break it down further. I can talk about. I was I was going to talk about uh, hand grips. Could you please use stall chasers? Um, okay, yeah, I'll do some stall chasers. Um, so I first talked about these two stalls here, um, and you end up with one at the bottom stall, and it's it's chilling here, and it's resting. Um, I've got these. Notice these angles, like 90 degrees. Um, and it's kind of hanging out. The other poi, either the one that was like up here or whatever it was doing, it's, it's over here. Uh, and it's going to swing across, go from, it's going to swing across my body and link up with this other hand. Um, and it's going to look like that. Um, so what's happening is, um, verse, like doing a extension like this, I'm going to swing down and right when I'm at, excuse me, my hand, I'm going to let it swing a little bit more so that there's an angle, like I'm creating an angle here versus an extension where there's like, it's like straight, my arm to, through the tether is like straight. I'm going to create like a little bit of a angle there so that it's, it's going to move like this. So, like that, it's going to link up, like as soon as I get to my hand holding the, the resting poi, that's where I create an angle, and the resting poi hand is just going to follow behind the, um, the swing, the, uh, the traveling poi, and just basically chase that hand. And you're creating a connection between the two hands, and uh, you're creating a, a line between the poi, like they're going like this. Um, you're creating like this this uh, straight line, um, and that's that's um, like one of the things about like creating like a really clean, crisp flow is emphasizing those angles, um, and it's 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 like where a lot of the magic comes from because this is like a this is a round dynamic object. So if you can create the illusion that there's stiffness and angles, kind of like how I am right now. Um, that's it's, it really adds emphasis to your flow because um, it's like well how did that thing just become stiff as a rod like um, so you can do that in so many fashions like here I'm creating two uh, two stiff lines um, I can do more stalls there like I'm creating a stiff straight line um, and that's just like again upward and downward stall but I'm doing them on the same side like that and as ways I can play with that, um, which I can break down if you want, but uh, talking about stall chasers, we're creating a line with the two tethers from the connection of our hand. And you can go, once you like get back and forth, you can, you can just switch it off, practice it. Helps to have a mirror so you can like check your, your lines with that. Hope that cleared things up. Yeah. All right. Cool. Um, okay. Uh, any other any other points uh, people want to see covered? Anything I didn't cover that I that people want to hear that people want to talk about? Um, I was also going. I I was. If anyone has any questions uh, about grips, um, there's like various grips that I was going to mention, um, if people were curious, uh, you really, I mean, you spin however you want to spin, really, honestly, with uh, your grips. But there are like certain ways that um, help a bit more. Um, like different grips just yield better results in different fashions. Um, but mainly I spin, I spin like, like this um, uh, thumb. And I'm, I just grip like this. I used to do it like this um, when I had thinner rope. Um, that was how I started, and it kind of, it kind of like created a bit of a bad habit for me. And I eventually trained myself out and started like this. I still do it like this sometimes, um, and it's 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 good to really just be able to do it anyway, because like if you're dabbling with 
tossing or however, whatever you're messing with, uh, you might end up on the tether uh, in a various fashion. So the more you're familiar, the different groups, the more groups you're familiar with, uh, the better you're going to be at it ultimately. Um, like you can, one way is if I want to shorten up my tether, I can grab it like this where I'm just grabbing the rope and the knob is on the pinky side of my hand. Um, that's like a quick way I can shorten up the rope just a little bit. If I'm doing um, like stuff like that is built inside my body, like if I'm doing like a buzz saw like this, so like split time stuff. Um, like if I just need like a shorter tether on the fly. Like if you have, um, I don't mess with really long tethers, um, so I don't really need to wrap it around my hand, but if you have really long tethers, you can, you can wrap the tether around your hand as well. And that's, that's another thing to mess with. All right, well that's, uh, that's my class. I hope you all gain something from this. Um, and uh, if there's any questions, message me on, on Instagram. I'm happy to help. I love nerding out about flow. So anything, any questions you guys have, products, you name it, whatever. I'm, I'm open. Um, shoot me a message. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks, Curran. Um, can you hear me okay? Yeah, I hear you.